Hey there, and welcome to the wonderful world of powder actuated tools. Here's a design that is still currently widely available by several companies, and it has been sold by several other companies throughout the years. Uh, it's a real simple, adequate design. It's been around since the mid-1980s at least. And uh, there's been several changes over the years, even though they don't all look identical. There's uh, several variations of the tool. The original one had a trigger guard here, which is why we have this piece here. It was to fill in the spot that was uh, taken by the trigger guard. It didn't last very long because it was pretty small and um, hard to get your finger in there with gloves on especially. Several variations had a metal handle and you know there's different ways of different re types of reset assemblies, different nose pieces, things like that. But the design is the, basically the same and the back of the tool is the same, although they usually are not interchangeable. So I'm going to go through the tool, take it apart, just in case anybody out there uh, needs a little reference on this tool or others very similar to it. And uh, we'll do some other things later. I'm not sure if it'll be in this video or others. We'll find out. So anyway, to start, remove the handle bolts, of course. You can take this out if you want, but you should be able to get it apart. Without removing that, just get the sear down. There we go. And the sear is down. You may have to push the sear down again. If not, you'll end up damaging the spring if you're not careful. Or, of course, you could take that out. Firing pin in the firing spring. spring. There's a piece holding the mech together there. And that fell out because the firing pin wasn't holding it in. So we can't get that out very easily. We'll try a magnet. There we go. Typical reset assembly. There's the block and the spring. Barrel assembly is typical of an older tool in that it has the nylon buffer, something that is fading away rather quick despite its ability to function. Piston with a nib and the barrel. So this is a typical barrel. The nib is used to eject the powder load. Which real quick, let's go over that. Not sure if I've ever mentioned this before in some of the other videos of tools with the nib. But the powder load will sit exposed until the piston is pushed down by the powder load. And that is the firing position. So what you have here is a tool that has reduced power right off the bat. So it does struggle in sinking longer pins. Which is why, for the most part, you don't see pins above two and a half sold in the hardware stores next to these things. Uh, they an industrial strength tool has trouble driving a three inch pin, so these would have even more trouble. 
So to put it back together, we'll drop the spring in, then the block, line the groove up here with the, the keeper pin. Obviously, I didn't have it aligned. Let's try that again. Since this tool does not have an ejector, it uses a nib to eject the uh, powder load. It's kind of hard to turn the barrel or align the uh, neck by turning the barrel. Missed it again. There we go. Now, the spring goes into the pocket, the keyhole steer lever, there's a cut out there, or sear, not steer lever. The sear goes in that cutout, and it's held together by the firing pin. Place the spring on top. Take our handle. Hold the, uh, I'm holding the sear in with my thumb. Best not to use air tools on these things. Uh, I have seen these bolts, uh, air tools used on them and they end up breaking the handles. Of course, we line our slot up. Always check to make sure the tool is not loaded, even though you've had it apart, before pulling the trigger. So these days, just about every 22 caliber tool that is available from a manufacturer is of the nib variety. There is a nib in the, on the end of the piston. It's now in the chamber, which is why the powder load does not fall into the chamber until the barrel is pushed down which allows the nib to fall out of the chamber the powder load to fall into the chamber then you can close the tool and fire it and when, once you fire the tool you push the piston back the nib contacts the powder load and pushes it out this ram set tool is a good tool to demonstrate that with. They make a really good chamber, but I digress. So what this means is that the top of the piston is pushed away from the powder load. There's a space between the two. Uh, the gases have to fill that space before they start driving the piston, which means that these tools struggle to sink a long pin. Which again is why you seldom see three inch pins being sold in the hardware stores. But uh, if you cannot get that load to fall down like that, you're not going to fire the tool. And if you keep persisting and do eventually get it to fire, something can go wrong. So, that being said, I'll leave it at that and uh, say thanks for watching and have the day that you deserve.